welcome back. Today's video is another one from Phoebus, and this should be an interesting one, as I think it's their most ambitious watch to date, and it's called the Great Wall. Not only is it their toughest watch with 500 meters of water resistance, but it's their first watch with a Swiss Eta movement. As well as I believe it's the first time they've ventured into the more mid-tier categories, with an MSRP of $500. Yet the most ambitious part of the Great Wall is its design, as I feel it's their most original to date. Yet it's that originality which may also make it the most polarizing watch to date. I think this is one that Phoebus has been working on for a while, as they've been teasing rendered images about it for a long time now, so I think they've been tweaking it to get it just right. Except I don't think those rendered images have really told the full story, so it's nice that we're now finally seeing some real pictures, let alone finally getting in hand. And I want to send a huge thank you to Phoebus and Ethan for sending this in for review. Now after having the Great Wall for a week, I can say that if you're more interested in traditional classic designs, the Great Wall is not going to be for you, in which case you might be better off looking at Phoebus's Eagle Ray. But if you like something a little more original, maybe a little different and just a little bit funky, yet still refined and well built, then the Great Wall might be right up your alley. With regard to size, this is going to be very similar to the Wavemaster from last month, but with a whole different look and feel. Width is 42mm without the crown, and 45mm width, while lug to lug is just under 48. So footprint wise, this is really about the same size as many of the popular divers out there. However, it is a little tall at 15mm, but there are two things to bear in mind. The first is to remember that this is a 500 meter diver, so some thickness is to be expected. And secondly, that's 15 millimeters with a very nice double domed sapphire crystal, and that crystal has three layers of AR coating. So total height may be a little deceiving, as there are also some gradual steps as it goes to the top of the dome. From the case back to the edge of the bezel, it's about 12 and a half millimeters. And from the case back to the top of the sapphire on top of the bezel, it's 13 and a half, before it then jumps to 15 on top of the dial. So it really doesn't look or wear as tall as it sounds. And the crystal here is very nice, it's just beautifully clear when looking through it. Although no matter how much AR coating you use, you can never fully get rid of reflections on a domed crystal. Weight wise, the Great Wall is sitting at 200 grams, and that's with its bracelet which is one of the bigger differences between it and the Wavemaster, which was heavier at 214 grams. It's not that much of a difference, but it's definitely noticeable as you wear it. And I also think it's rather impressive of the Great Wall to be lighter, yet have a greater water resistance. Now half of that weight I think does come from the bracelet itself, and with a lug width of 22 millimeters, you have lots of options to change it out, including this molded silicon strap that actually comes with the Great Wall. And when you put that on the watch, it completely changes the look and feel when wearing it. I usually don't mention packaging, but here it's rather cool. Instead of your standard watch box, it actually comes with a nice travel case. Now the case itself is made with 316 stainless, and the entire thing has a very nice brushed finishing on it. The case itself is very angular, and maybe a little industrial looking. It's prominently defined by its sharp angle lugs that just jut down. Yet there's some very nice detail work in it as well. And I especially like the grooved edge on those lugs that I think give it a nice definition. Although at this price, I think it would be nice if they were actually drilled. There are rather minimal crown guards at the three, which are made up of these really small square blocks. There really isn't much functional purpose to them. They're there more to help define the case shape rather than actually protect the slightly oversized crown. And that crown has a very nice texture and knurling, making it very easy to get a hold of and manipulate. It is of course signed with the Phoebus Kraken logo, and they also get some bonus points for having the logo almost upright when fully screwed in. On the opposite side of the case you have a helium release valve, which honestly 99% of you will not use. But if you're designing a functional 500 meter diver, having one is not a bad idea. Completing the case is a nicely done screw down case back, and it's embossed with the watch's namesake, as well as everything else you need to know about it. And here you can also notice that the inside of the lugs have been routed out a little bit, 
either to keep the weight down or just give them a slimmer look. The bezel is unidirectional and 120 click, with a very 50 fathoms-ish type insert. The edge is very gear-like, and it's topped with a nice sapphire. It's aggressive, but not overly so, and I think it fits the case style. Yet it still gives you a very nice area to grip onto when you want to manipulate it. And it overhangs just slightly beyond the case. The bezel action here is excellent, with almost no backplay. Plus it has a great tactile feel and sound as you turn it. The only minor complaint I have about the entire case is that there seems to be contrasting geometries, where the case shape and bezel itself are very metallic, almost industrial and angular, which I think clashes a little bit with the very smooth and rounded curve of the sapphire on top of the watch, although a lot of that angular look is due to the solid end links. And I noticed that if you swap it to that silicon strap, it really changes the look of the watch and becomes much more flowing and organic. Or, if you swap it to something else entirely, the case shape tends to fade into the background, as your eyes are more focused on the vibrant colors of the dial and bezel. There are currently four versions of the Great Wall, and I think this picture on Phoebus's site is great, as it properly orders them from the most bold, you know, hey look at me one, to the most subtle on the right, or subtle relatively speaking. Now when it comes to color on this particular one, the bezel matches the dial with a gray and orange color scheme, with a touch of light beige or maybe cream color for the numerals, although all the numerals and indices have a slight green hue to it, especially on the dial. But that's simply from the massive amount of loom on here, which we will get to shortly. Before we get to that, let's look at the dial real quick. And every aspect of the dial here is fantastic, especially with the indices and hands, where they have this thick, glossy enamel or lacquer-like appearance, which looks beautiful against the backdrop of the dial. The overall design here follows a great wall or military motif, with the background of the dial looking like a very textured wall, and the primary indices at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 are shield-shaped, while the rest are sword blades, or maybe they're actually tips of a spear. Either way, they're all applied with a very nice orange base, and on top of that base sits a whole lot of loom. Just beyond the indices, a chapter ring sits on top of the dial, and it's in a similar gray color to that dial, but with black minute indicators, helping it barely stand out. Color-wise, it really blends in and is sometimes hard to see when you're looking for it, which in some ways may be a good thing as it doesn't distract from the dial, but when you do want to find it, it is a little hard. But what's really great about that chapter ring is that it's molded to fit around the edges of the indices, which not only gives it some extra depth, but lets those indices sit further back on the dial, which I think gives it a bigger appearance. And a side benefit is that it should severely limit the odds of getting one with a misaligned chapter ring. Perhaps this is something Seiko should take note of. When it comes to the hands, the hour and second hand are in black, while a very long minute hand is in a matching orange. The hands are sword-shaped, yet shaped slightly different than the indices to help differentiate it, although at some angles they look a little more like pencils, but that really doesn't fit the theme. While the orange finish is nice, it's the glossy black of that minute and second hand that really stand out against the gray dial. Length on these is great as well, with the hour hand going point to point with the sword indices, and the minute hand going close, but not quite to the chapter ring. And the second hand is just a millimeter or so longer than the minute hand. At the bottom, you have the depth rating and automatic in a very small font, so it's not distracting at all. Yet you also have a date window that sits right on top of a partial shield at the six, which here it's just a circular cutout in that wall. It looks okay, but I feel like they really should have done more here partially because that circular hole just feels off from the rest of the design. What I would like to see is that that date window be integrated into an indice. Just use a regular shield indice at the 6, but have a cutout in it for the date. That way, the date almost appears as a crest on the shield. Now, love it or hate it, the Phoebus Kraken Octopus logo is sitting at the top here. And normally I like the logo, and I still like it here but I think it does feel a little off with the theming, although I'm not really sure what else they could have done. 
other than something ridiculous, like putting a spear in its hand and maybe a helmet on its head. Although, let's talk about that theme for just a minute. Now, when I recently posted some photos of the Great Wall on Instagram, Dave from over at Just The Watch asked, what does the Great Wall have to do with diving? And that is a very legitimate question, as well as what does the whole military theme have to do with a dive watch, as it would seem more at place on a field watch. And Phoebus is the only one who can really answer that question. But the connection I see is this, that the Great Wall is a modern wonder of the world, an impenetrable feat of engineering and ingenuity designed to keep the outside forces at bay which in many ways is what a dive watch is supposed to do when it's underwater. And since this is their most ambitious and toughest dive watch to date, it seems like it could be a good fit for a name. Or they just could have thought it sounded cool and ran with it. I don't know. Now the design as a whole is something that I do like. It's different and maybe a little odd when you look at the individual components. But as you look at the whole picture, I think it works. Its combination of a rugged angular case mixed with a funky but vibrant dial appeals to me. It won't be for everyone, that's for sure. Yet it may be the first watch I've found outside Seiko that hits the same tick marks and vibes that a monster does, but done on perhaps a more refined level. You can especially see it when you look at the loom, where the sword and shield indices start to look more like aggressive teeth. And the Great Wall really is a monster when it comes to loom with 15 layers of X1 grade C3 Swiss Superluminova. And I believe X1 grade is actually the highest they have, and is supposed to last longer than their standard grade. So because of that and the sheer surface area of those indices, I knew this was going to be good. So I threw it up against my trusty Seiko Turtle and the Helm Komodo. And for good measure, the Phoebus Wavemaster. Initially, I'd say the Great Wall is the brightest, but that's not going to be hard just from the sheer surface area. Now, since these are all great watches when it comes to loom, after 40 minutes, they're all still clearly visible. Yet the dial on the Great Wall is still a little bit brighter than the rest of them, but not by a huge amount. Although interestingly, the bezel has faded a little more than the Wavemaster or the Helm Komodos. So this shows that the Great Wall has great loom and really up there with the best. But I really wanted to know if there was really anything to that X1 grade Super Luminova. So I redid it, but took it out to three hours. So after an hour, the bezel has definitely faded, yet the dial is still very visible. And after two, the turtle and the Komodo have really faded into the background. Now I actually miscalculated my time lapse, so this really only went to two and a half hours. Yet at that time point, the Wavemaster is still there, but just hanging on by a thread. Interestingly though, it's the loom on the bezel of the Wavemaster that's really hanging in there. So the Great Wall clearly lasts longer than the others. But since I don't know what grade the Komodo or the Wavemaster use, I can't really say with any certainty that it's brighter because of the X1, or if it's just the sheer surface area. What I can say, however, is that it is currently the best I've ever seen. Movement-wise, we have an ETA 2824-2, which I believe is a first for Phoebus. It's high beat at 28,800 beats per hour which you probably noticed from the very smooth second hand. And as you'd expect, it has hacking, hand winding, and around 38 hour power reserve. It's still considered a workhorse movement, just a more refined and much, much more expensive one than a Seiko NH35. And the accuracy has been great on this specific one, losing only a couple of seconds a day. The bracelet is also great, and I really think it's fitting for a watch at this price. It's very nice with a good solid feel, and has more of a tank tread style to it, which includes having a hex bolt and pin holding the links together. Now the Great Wall comes with two small hex screwdrivers to aid in sizing it, although be very careful when doing it, and pay close attention to the arrows on the back of the bracelet. The screws here are very small, and I'd be concerned about either over tightening them or just losing them outright. Now, the Great Wall's bracelet has a very good push-button clasp, and that's with a diver's extension. It's milled, and looks great and feels nice and solid. Not to mention it feels very balanced when wearing it. The only negative thing I can point out about it here is that there's a little bit of play to the clasp when closed. Although I think that's being a little nitpicky, as you never really notice it while it's on the wrist. With the bracelet, I really like how the Great Wall feels on the wrist. I believe it wears better than some other 42s I have, but I wouldn't go so far to say it wears smaller like a 40. 
When you put it on, it just seems to sit exactly where it needs to. With the bracelet, you do notice the weight, but you mostly feel just the case back and the top of the bracelet as it hugs your wrist. Now swapping it to the supplied silicone strap and it completely changes the look. The rough angles of the solid end links are gone and replaced with a more organic curve that complements the domed crystal on the watch and bezel. And it also loses about half of its weight, which makes the Great Wall much more comfortable to wear. This may be Phoebus's most expensive watch, but when it comes to price, I think an MSRP $500 is pretty good here. If you want to compare it, you really have to compare it to other watches with an ETA 2824-2. And by itself, that movement can actually run up to $200. If you look around, you'll find some that have a good bezel, some with a good bracelet, and some with great loom. And some may even have 500 meters of water resistance. But I think you'll have a hard time finding one watch with all of those at a price that comes close to the Phoebus's Great Wall. Now, when it comes to other micro brands, most of them tend to make watches that all try to outdo each other in terms of elegance and refinement. And in some ways, they all seem to get lost within one another and have a hard time really standing out. So I think Phoebus is actually really smart for doing something original, something different, and something kind of fun for their first attempt at the mid-tier market. And for me, that is the same ideas that go into making a Seiko monster. So perhaps that is the ideal customer for the Great Wall. Someone who wants something different, original, a little fun, maybe a little funky, but wants one done on a different level. Something that's more refined in its execution. Not to mention that if your logo is a giant octopus, you're better off sticking with fun and cool designs. Now, if you're interested in a great wall, right now Phoebus still only has those computer rendered images up. So it's kind of hard to pick which color you might actually want. So I'll pin a comment down below with other images or other reviews of these as I find them, just to give you a better idea of what's out there. If you're not, however, then a good takeaway from this video is you can see what type of quality Phoebus can put out the next time they decide to swim in these deeper waters. Now, as usual, let me know in a comment down below what you think about the Phoebus's Great Wall, and specifically if you get a monster vibe off of it, or maybe it's just me. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.